siyabonga nukubonga nkosi leli tubo sipe lona uguba sihtale nga sezi nyawe ni zake zako situle jengo maria laputa tewabo esha enyuga e katazwa izi nte iningi kotwa umaria waketo pambili Wasale ni yawe ni zako wanga paza niswa luto Mwaka abambe ilelo na lelo kama We thank you for such a wonderful opportunity to sit quietly at your feet like Mary Not to be hot and bothered like Martha But rather to sit not allowing anything to disturb us That we receive each and every word you have to say Amen Amen Isogo setu Balega Usinde. Our theme is escape for your life. Oma balegi kega sinde uzo trines hokwe ni nakanjani. The one who hasn't escaped will never escape finally, for he will land in hell. Sezwage ngolot kotumgake no mingelo zia sezului ni ingelo zembili zbabamba bonke ulot. Nomkake namatotaga zoma bili babanje nasi stompe. God wa umgaloti wa salemu vutezwat. Kumbula nomgaloti wa penduga waba intriga saud. Unkulunkulwa menzu kuba usauti uguba wena usizagale ngaye ungabi umgaloti. Despite the fantastic opportunity to escape and that the angels were literally dragging them out, nevertheless, Lot's wife, as we see depicted in this picture here, she decided to turn around and God changed her into a pillar of salt. It was only Lot and his daughters who escaped. God made that to happen so that you might escape. <laughs> And Jesus made a point of it when he said, Don't be like Lot's wife. Now, God knows what it is that inspires you to turn back or to look back. We don't know why she looked back, but you know why you look back. When we are sazi, it's so, into yako, we are yazi into yako, ekale isisaye mu. Leo ntoke, yoketa, bubuk jesu, tu obe gisante kecheni, akala ze muva, akafane lungu soezu. You know what that thing is. And Jesus had said, whoever puts his hand to the plow and glances back is not worthy of me. I was so pleased to hear about the testimonies yesterday. I was delighted to hear of what was said and the boy who mentioned that it's just become the norm of girlfriends, boyfriends, <coughs> that which really smells of the world. In this experience that Lot underwent, he was able to be a true man in that. He just kept his eyes set to the front and you too whether it's your wife, your husband, or whoever it may be, only forward, never backwards. He 
He didn't look back, neither did he talk back to her to check on where she was because his eyes were set to the front and had he asked about her, she was already a pillar of salt. Today, now looking, escape and be saved. Let's look at what this is escape and fleeing means. And we read 2 Timothy chapter 2. Many people start with escaping, but they don't finish it. And that's why I say to you young people, what you've begun, you finish. In particular, those who made that decision yesterday, even in King Shaka's time, he was a man who would deal with any soldier who was wounded in the back. They were only allowed to have wounds from battle in the front. Otherwise, they were seen as cowards and they were put to death. If, if you have got a wound on your back, cry to God and see whether he shows grace. If you need, if you do get wounds, then they should only be on the front and the forehead. Second Timothy chapter two verse twenty two. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Flee youthful lusts. Oh, the troublesomeness of youthful lusts. Many are absolutely destroyed through it. There is no text saying fight against the youthful lusts. Neither does it say wrestle and conquer. There's only one way and that is to flee, run away from it. It doesn't help. If you've got a viper, a deadly snake, that you lock yourself in the room and then you think you're going to escape harm, it'll kill you. With the lust of the flesh, some fall into that pit every day. It's on a daily basis and they just never escape it. Satan <laughs> 
how troublesome some, even married, nevertheless still troubled by youthful lust, where one says, oh, Satan has um, infiltrated with this deadly sin. Where a person is old already or growing old, but they're still troubled by youthful lusts. Maybe they're at school or college, but they're still troubled by the lusts of youth. Or maybe they're a child, but they're already troubled by lust. And the Bible says, flee from that. Now, the Greek meaning does not imply that you intellectually run away from it or that in your thoughts you try and uh, fight and escape from it. It means literally removing yourself out of it. You flee bodily. It means it in the very literal sense. You watch out for those men who touch and fondle. They are another sort. Let there always be a distance between you and him. Although yesterday we also pointed out that there are those who are flirtatious boys among boys, the homosexual side of it, so you flee from every aspect of it. Run, run from it, escape. When the wife of Potiphar was tempting Joseph and then even handled him and grabbed hold of his jacket, he escaped out of that coat. He said, how can I sin against God? Yes, we do live in the body. And there are the natural inclinations, but the Bible says, flee from the lusts. For if you do not run from it, you will die. You will not be healed. You're not a sinner. And through your fleeing, many others will escape. Joseph was woken up by the Lord at night through a dream and he said, Now, take your wife, take the baby and flee to Egypt right now. He got up. And he said, Mary, wake up. Take the child. Let us escape right now and take up the little that we have. And they took that gold, frankincense and myrrh and off they went immediately to Egypt.
ngasinge nayo uKhesu namhlanje ngayifile le bulawa nengane zale kwa Israel if it works out and it is in the lord's way that we can um, once we get to heaven and the trumpet sounds and we met by the by the saints that we can talk and and listen to other stories i'd love to go to joseph and shake his hand congratulate him and say thank you for being obedient to god when he woke up that night with a dream that you immediately obeyed through that i have the savior izukulwana nge izukulwana ziyasiza kala ngo jesu uma u joseph akade ephethe ubuthongo ethi ngikhathele awa ngikwazi kuhamba kuye gibhi kude gibhide awu nonina usebthaka ngasinge nayo uJesu namhlanje kodwa manje sinaye ngoba walalela lalela wena ngokulalela uzisindisa wena kanti uzosindisa nabanye kodwa uma ungalaleli uyobufa bese kufe nenqwaba nawe had he been disobedient then it means that he would have come up with an excuse by saying no i don't it's not convenient that's not suitable mary is weak what would we have done without the savior generation after generation has escaped because of him and you too by your escaping from sin and fleeing others will flee with you and that god should say specifically flee youthful lusts why so because youthful lusts will hurt you they will wound you both bodily and spiritually that your body should be healthy and well and you've got that energy it's wonderful channel that energy into the preaching and the propagation of the gospel bukani ikomo bukani ikudzi zinamandla qinile kunezinkabi inkunzi kodwa amandla akho ungawanika oyesifazane uyothoneka utheneka ube izidalwana look at the what healthy cattle healthy bulls are like um oxen are weaker than um cattle if they are uh, normal and with that full health and um, that is what you need to do as well that you you are healthy and well and escape from sin muso kuthatha amandla nawo nikho wesifazana wesilima wesiphuko phuko kuqatha amandla akho ukhethe impilo yakho wathatha wabophele ufake jokweni lika Jesu hamba ushumayele ivangeni kukhuphuke entabeni fakazi umele iqiniso ube nobuchawe hayi ube yinto isidwedwe sabesifazane noma sabafana basulele insila yabo kuwe and the bible declares that you should not give your strength to women in other words use that health and that energy direct it into the right thing otherwise you end up being um, wounded and destroyed because of the sin and you girls you allow men just to wipe their filth off you and you get destroyed with it only maza owakho mzimba ngoma unika amandla akho abesifazana usuleke ukuvuka nasekuseni ukhathele you destroy your own health your own energy your own fitness if you giving your ungenwa buvila akukukhuthala akukukuhlakanipha ukhuphuke ube indoda emadodeni if you giving your energy uyazakha usube yinto njengesidakwa amandla kaphelile ithi alutho and you funeke ukuntsizwa kufuneka ubuntombi ubona ukuthi hey gwele lo muntu igwele lentombi nalentsizwa inobuntsizwa uyibona nasebunzini ukuthi isile and the person who directs his energies in the right direction that person is noteworthy you can see this person doesn't wake up late they're not lazy having lost all their energy in this sin but instead they have preserved that energy for god ungathatha amandla akho athithe wasebenzise embusweni kaNkulunkulu 
Don't take your energies and distribute it for evil, but take it for God. And such a person has a, a health about them in every way and their words are something that are, come with honesty and integrity instead of the opposite where you can, the words are just a, a stench and it um, just makes you feel sick. If you understand German, you would hear the, the extra powerful way it says that it's the, the awful stench of promiscuity and of whoredom that comes out of a person's mouth. That's why and that's why I say it comes and it is dis- despicable. It's just an abomination to those who hear that person. And that sin destroys people's energies and nations. I've for a long time told you how civilizations are totally destroyed like the Roman one. Your spiritual life can never survive if you're wasting your thoughts and your, your all about you that you're thinking always and you're on that topic. Um, I told you yesterday about that man who even ended up committing suicide. The body cannot survive the attack of lust. Have a look at those who walk in purity. Note their face. Note even their step. There's just something different about them. On the other hand, the one who's promiscuous, even 12 years of age, they look worn out and tired and they just, it's self-evident. My own mother, the one who gave me birth once many years ago, I remember we were sitting in a tent and it was visible just uh, from the flap down that you could see these girls walking by and you could just see them from the lower half and she would say, that one, just in her step, she's a virgin. Yeah. 
even the way a person gives themselves over as in making a statement about their clothing and their swing or their strut, you can see this person is promiscuous, they're sexually loose. Girls, Girls, why don't you um, invest in the right thing instead of being picked up by any old body who comes by on wheels with a lorry or a bicycle or tractor and you don't know where they come from, where they're going to, and you allow yourself to be abused in that way. Instead, rather turn your attention to Jesus and speak to that person about the Lord. Otherwise, it's just a pit for you. But just look at the huge amount of babies being born out of wedlock, just illegitimate children at homes. Um, these are children born in the image of God. Why should it be like this? It's never been as bad as now. And and you are worse and you behave worse than cattle, worse than animals. At least a cow has a, a sense of duty towards its calf. It'll rear it, it'll look after it. Animals will do anything to protect their young. But you are worse than animals. In fact, you should be making an apology to the animals because you desert the baby. The father has no sense of duty. He deserts the baby, denies that it's his, and one becomes lower than animals. <laughs> I think of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 10. Let me read it for you. And From verse 1 to 5, that despite them being delivered and drinking of the same spiritual food, with most of them God was not pleased and their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. And verse 6, now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Verse 
futhi asingenzi ukufebe njengokuba banye bubo kubo benza ukufebe bafa ngosuku lunye abayizinkulungwane ezingamashumi amabili nantathu and not become idolaters as some of them were as it is written the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did and in one day 23000 fell kuthwa lokho kwisibonelo kuthina isibonelo unkulunkulu usiphe isibonelo it says it's written as an example for us eh kule mnyaka edlule nezwa ngetsunami eyayiphesheya ngasendonesi ngasasiya in recent years ulwandle olunamagagasi amakhulu You heard about the tsunami that happened with these huge waves that happened there in the east abaningi bafa ngoba amagagaso olwandle aye 10 meter high cisho kusuka laphansi ukuze kushaya le phezulu many drowned because the waves grew into an enormous size up to 10 meters high and more reaching heights like this auditorium manje kukhona isiqhingi ngase indonesia now there's a certain island in the indonesian direction isibizwa ukuthi simule simulu island it's called simulu islands la kule island bekhona abantu abawu 75000 just on that island or those islands there were 75000 people kodwa kwawo aba 7 kuphela kwafa aba 7 kuphela just 7000 died basinda kanjani abanye bebhubha bephela how did so many escape while most perished okhokho baba umkhulu nokhulu baxoxela ingane ukuthi hey ngo 197 ulwanze kwaba khona ukuzama zama kumhlaba ulwanze lwase liphindele muva koma kodwa lapho selibuya libuye nolaka olukhulu amagagasi abe u10 meters 30 feet high basa abantu bakithi bathi xwayani uma kuzama zama umhlaba ulwandle luye mufa noqondo ukuthi yezi itsunami itsunami lapho kunyakaza umhlaba bebona ulwandle 75000 abantu bakhitima bakhuphukele entabeni ukuthi lapho kuza ulwandle nolaka olukhulu kuza ulwandle amagagasi 10 meter high tholakala bese entabeni pau 7 angazi ukuthi bekuyiza lukazini angazi ukuthi bekwabantu abangenazi inyawo abafayi kodwa bonke abanye basinda kodwa kwezinye iqhingi bafa bonke baphela they had been taught carefully by their ancestors with the tales passed down from mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers <coughs> they had told them that in 1907 there had been an awful experience where the sea withdrew and it looked dry on the shore and then came back with a vengeance and that the waves were huge and many people died and they warned them that if they see that water retracting like that that they need to flee and they all fled to the mountains and they all escaped i don't know those 7000 that did perish whether they were just old people or what seven kuphela ababhubhayo 75000 basinda ngoba ba only 7 sorry not 7000 but 7 people only perished all the others remembered what they had been told and they escaped to the mountains out of 75000 only 7 perished basinda bonke ngoba bakhithima bathatha amanjabo bakhuphukela entabeni balibona ulwandle qhiba imizi yabo bupisa basinda bale kusinda basinda they had felt that earthquake they had seen the sea retracting and they knew the message 
and they fled to the mountains. Only seven of them died. They all escaped because they were obedient to that escape for your life. If you listen to the Bible, the Bible says, If you heed the Bible message, you will escape. You will also escape disease and dying prematurely because you have listened to the words of the Bible. And child desertion, previously I didn't mention as well, how can you behave like that, deserting a child made in the image of God, where cattle and animals have that instinct to protect their young, but you just desert them and maybe those illegitimate children also grow up. I've seen many people with gray hairs because of the awful things that happen in those circumstances. But how wonderful it is when we see the father with the child, the mother with the child, they, they, they propagating the gospel. We want to bless such a child. We, we say this is part of heaven and we identify with that child. I also had children, six children. They've now grown up and they've got married. My youngest one is here. And they've, we rejoice in, the, what, in that they have gone in this direction. What an awful What a disgrace on the other hand it would have been to me had there been illegitimate children brought, some calling me grandfather and they are they've just been brought there and they the children hadn't been married just illegitimate children don't take the flesh lightly because if you if you just ignore and you don't take seriously this it will cause you destruction where you'll have to apologize to the cattle and the animals and dogs because even um, a female dog will look after its young. So escape youthful lusts. That means don't try and wrestle with it or try and just resist it and fight against it. No, escape, flee, remove yourself. Now, the lust of the flesh are not only sexual lusts. Now, 
Some are bound by the lust for drink. They are bound to alcohol. They lust after it. They destroy themselves and their families. And it causes you to be destroyed in every way that you're, you become dumb. Even little children laugh at you. You can't even bring bread to the table because you spend your last penny on alcohol. Physically, you are devastated. You think that you're putting this into you with no consequences, but it's not like fuel which makes a car go, like petrol. Instead, it gets into you and it starts to destroy you. Your liver after a while is corrupted. You vomit blood. You are destroyed. The lusts of the flesh are destructive that even little children can recognize it. And you as an older person, you have no control over your bodily functions anymore. The children have to wash your clothing and it is just utter devastation. So puzile na umamu, kai utwana. Uya puzu, puzise na matoto. Na uyaya kwa puzai. Uya buya usahamu na senjeleni. Usu hambe keleni. Usu pagami singubo. Utrita amanzi. Gene silwa ni sasenze. Yong ingane zioksho nipa kanjani. Au zelenu ingane zaku. Zeshelu ingane zaku. Ukuba. And then that woman, as she gets older, she can't control herself because she has to have her alcohol. She drinks not only at home, but she goes to these pubs and shabins. She can't control herself. She wets herself. What a terrible thing so that it brings destruction even upon your children. <laughs> And the lust for alcohol causes that you cannot live normally. You can't hold a job. You can't wake up in the morning. Instead, you wake up with a headache, with bubble lust, with a, with a hangover. And you need a rech market to try and get you on the way again. And it's just absolute destruction. When we are lamb, in Shuya Kintan, I'm not in Fenis. Both go to Kalu TV, Kalu TV, Pela Isiho, Kosinga Pela Rajanu Bakon, Inganu is Legas Kasatan in Shuya. When on TV, you know Satan and Shuya. And it brings poverty. You might complain that others have taken away your wealth, but it brings poverty in your family. 
despite that you maybe still have a TV and that brings the whole world and wickedness into your home. Jesus is not there. And you complain as a, a woman now that your husband has deserted you and doesn't send back money for your children. Your children don't help you. Well, if you fed them on the things of the devil, what do you expect to reap? And if you make your children hungry, how can you expect that child that through your habit of alcohol you've made hungry to respect you? Instead they go out to steal and you have pushed them into the sin of stealing. They cannot work, they can jump around and dance, but that's it. Oh, that's it. You have to go to the house. 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 You have to go to They don't have brains in their head. And instead of brains in their head, you see that they bound just by um, habits and instinct. If they hear just a bit of a beat, their body starts to jerk in different directions. They can't hold a job. They're unemployable. And instead, that's the type of thing and you have brought it about. And we should We should rebuke those who bring dancing, the dancing of the world into the church. That's what we've repented of. We shouldn't be dancing in the church. That is that comes with a completely different spirit. Now it says that we should escape, but it's not just stressing the negative. It means escape while doing good. Look at what Peter has to say. First Peter 2 from verse 11. <laughs> Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. There will never be a shortage of mockers. There will always be the wicked who will 
laugh and be arrogant against the gospel, but you are told to live differently. You should be the one escaping from evil while doing good. There will always be the seven who refuse to climb the mountain and to escape. There will always be those who refuse to climb the mountain of Calvary to go up that hill. But as for you, you escape. Escape. You escape for your life. And uh, you've heard how there are many different types of lusts from which we should flee. For instance, flee from bad talk, foul mouthing, and tell that person that's not the way to talk. Instead of stealing, you do the opposite. Now you're working. You are beneficial to others. If you've got extra clothing, you can help others. Instead of depriving others, you are assisting them now. And when there's bad music around, you need to know how to correct it. And you tell them what is wrong about it. You speak to them. Now your life becomes different and you are now a, you're beneficial to society. Instead of messing around, you are busy helping. I'm so, I'm so glad about our school children who can go to other school children and proclaim the gospel. That's what we need. Otherwise, Africa is dying. The world is dying of starvation for the gospel. <laughs> Even as we are here this week, there are others who are not here, other young people who are busy preaching the gospel down in Cape Town, Smithfield, up um, north in Pumalanga and different places, they say it's a pity we're still at school that we can't be full time in preaching the gospel. But, the Lord willing, in a month's time or so, next month, there's a man who wants to come and that I should host him and take him around to primitive areas where you cannot walk, where rather by helicopter you can take people so that people can hear the gospel. That person said, I've heard how you um, are so desperate to get the gospel out and how the Lord is using young people and I want to come and assist you with a helicopter. 
Ngathi akangifuneli indawo esayintabeni emahlathini ngoba zikhona indawo enjalo afike khona baqale nga umbono umlungu I've asked some to assist in finding in those very Uncle primitive Joe. areas I've asked Uncle Joe Uncle Joe yes. to assist in finding landing areas there's some places where it is um, absolutely cut off from civilization some places I've never seen a white man before and that way as in jalo ngithini kufunela zona ngoba ngifuna ukumphatha ngimise khona abone ukuthi umaye ngalethu ufezela wakhe uzosebenza umsebenzi muni nangapha entabeni nangu ubaba mabizela wangwa ngicocela ngendaba ngabantu le enyakathi nakwazulu usakhumbula and there are some people who have just never heard uh, I've been told the different people I remember Reverend Mabizela telling me a while back that there are some places that they are totally uncivilized even cannibalistic I put his libala bespazan. Sibo dot. Sinuke. Sibole. Amancheta pelecon. A pelele vangelini. I own it. Our energies need to be directed towards what is good. Propagating the gospel, spreading the gospel, not giving it out to sexual lust, but instead towards the kingdom. Satan ube kondu popisum shama. Popisum shama. Satan's intention has, to be, has been to swallow the world. But God has come with his gospel. Jesus. <laughs> Ube ngathi ngahlala nabo usuku nosuku ngibona belulama ngibona besinda bayiphile inkosi ngithi hawu Jesu wakhuluma wathambizelanga abaphilayo ngezela abagulayo mina I've got many people Siyani le mseni ngibona ukuthi kuhle kanjani nibona abantu bebhuka besinda abantu abagubhayo who are abanye lapho sakha is better than peche but in fundis apa matuna abantu babazobalapha ngathi akasiyeka matuna sisashuma elifa ngelokuphila futhi kube namhlanje ngomusa nkulunkulu akabiko noyedwa wesifazane ofele khona asikancwabi noyedwa khona la yebo khona abanye bafika bahlala babe ngcono bahambe futhi bese sizwe ngendabu abasekho sebefi there are many people and even sick people who are so in my heart so dear to me and remember the Lord said he hasn't come to bring the gospel for the healthy but for the sick and even though it is said that these people are terminally ill and that they must die but the Lord works mightily um, we have a place called Mseni, and that we see as a place for life. We don't, we're not reckoning with the death, but we see how the Lord works. Um, others asked, well, where's the graveyard before we had even built it? I said, we're not reckoning with uh, funerals, we're reckoning with life. By the Lord's grace, no lady has died there yet, and we are busy with the matters of life. <laughs> Ilonda as valeki, koto uma be voma zia valeka. Zia valeki si banga le sunkunu kulu tini. Nina sin seba so gozo. O tini unkunu kulu. Ume pilisa. Kone pilisa bat. Abanga sinti. Nelon des gulega is in a valeki. Koto muta istambulule. Abuma maput. Asinde. I snevangel, snevangel, snevangel in Simbi. Ezde ezini in Simbi. I snevangel, I go kufana nevangel. 
Pai, pai, nina nfebayo, enpuzayo, eni utigilayo, zianshia. Salan kona labuzo kwesta, ispapulo, nomlilo, ziapitima, zbalegele ntabi. And even in the worst of conditions, the Lord is able to touch. Despite open sores, as they confess their sin, the Lord is even able to, and He does close sores. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may stay with your lusts of uh, sexual lusts or the lusts of the drinking and other narcotics and that. You will be destroyed, but we want to be busy with matters of life, propagating the gospel. Stop makandi, tanda. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've come with your gospel into this wicked and corrupted world. That you've opened, you've opened the way of escape so that we can escape to Golgotha. So that we would not be destroyed, body and soul. But instead have life, and that abundantly. Work, Lord. Continue with your working. Amen. 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 The day before yesterday, I phoned somebody who's down there in Cape Town and who has access to Parliament who said, get the Minister of Health to come and see what the Lord is doing. She said, well, what... What muti do you have there? What medicine? I said, the medicine we have is the gospel and good nutrition. Thank you. Put Michael.